August 6, 2012. I was living in this tiny village in the green rural mountains of Lebanon, watching on our small TV screen at home, the Curiosity rover landing, and the faces of everyone in mission control lighting up. I saw Dr. Charles Lashi, a Lebanese-American legend directing and leading the whole endeavor at NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I knew I wanted to pursue this. I wanted to make my mark in space. And almost nine years and three MIT degrees later, my dream has come true. Here I am, currently doing my PhD work on NASA's most recent Mars rover, Perseverance. My research focuses on one of the rover's instruments called MOXIE. MOXIE helps prepare for future human exploration on Mars by creating oxygen from the Martian atmosphere instead of carrying that with us from Earth. This oxygen is critical for future astronauts to breathe on Mars and to be able to have the rocket propellant to come back home. Since the moment I decided to step outside of Lebanon, however, I knew that my passport was not going to be a good companion. Working in the space sector in the US while being from the Middle East with all the stereotypes that this carries was clearly not the best idea. And for years at MIT, I was the only woman foreign national from the Middle East in any of my aerospace classes. A minority of a minority of a minority. Year after year, I started to realize how much someone's nationality is an incredibly powerful inherent privilege. I started to realize how much the place and time you are born in have an impact in every step of the way in what you do. How much power a passport has. A document that none of us has any say or choice about. That gets signposted on us from the moment we take our very first breath. Yet, it defines every step of our way, where we can go, what opportunities we can access, how much income we make, and how many additional barriers we have to overcome to achieve a certain dream. For some of you, this passport is a pride, but for many, many others, it's just a recipe of challenges and discrimination. This is not new. It's an issue that extends years back in history. In our territorial problems are held over from whole different eras of colonialism, World War I and before. It is human nature to seek power and the urge to be part of the stronger group. Today, however, geography is even less important and the main concern is on the national security threats. But if we're going to send people to Mars, or solve the climate change crisis, or tackle any of the difficult questions that affect all of us on a global scale, we need more people from more backgrounds to be in the same room, and we don't have a second to waste. In a year of a pandemic that hit all of us around the globe, did you hear the successful immigration stories? Like that of the husband and wife team who immigrated from Turkey to now lead the efforts behind a vaccine that saved all of us. In an environment where immigrants are portrayed as threats, we have to put more visibility for success stories and for contributions that immigrants have in society. Because immigrants, we get the job done. But let's talk about space now. If you've seen the movie Hidden Figures, you'd recall the story of gender and race in the space race, and the absurd hostility and challenges that Katherine Johnson and many other incredible women had to conquer while being the brains behind the missions. Today, I will give you a current parallel to these challenges, but rather dictated by the tyranny of passports and nationalities. This was my very first internship at NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Probably one of the proudest moments of my life to finally have my dream of somehow 
working at NASA come true. I was exactly where I always dreamed to be. It took tons of paperwork, challenges and workarounds to make it happen. But soon after, my dream gradually started turning into a nightmare. I cannot access any of these NASA centers anymore. The truth is, I cannot access the majority of space companies, whether commercial or governmental in the US. Not even for a tour. Swept by a whole mix of crises and political instabilities, Lebanon officially made it a few years ago to the list of designated and restricted countries under sanctions and embargo from the US. A hard crushing reality that I have no responsibility for, nor any power to change. Yet, it pretty much defines any decision I make or any opportunity I can access. And that's the thing about national security and expert control regulations. Some concerns are valid. There's a certain nuance to them that no one can deny. And it's not a simple challenge. But sweeping the entire population of countries and entire fields of work with the same brush is a merely dangerous, lazy way of putting everyone in the same bucket instead of thinking through the proper solution. These regulations present major hurdles, especially with their intentional ambiguity, high licensing cost, inefficiency, and serious liability on institutions. February 18, 2021 was the day that I saw our MOXIE research project land on the surface of Mars. And a few weeks ago, we produced our very first oxygen. It was nerve wracking, but incredibly exciting. There it was in my hands, the data proving our first step that paves the way to send humans to Mars. However, I still find it crazy that we're talking about going interplanetary, but still struggle with going international between countries. In my own research, Every day is a struggle. The number of meetings I can't attend, documents I can't read, hardware I can't touch, places I need to be escorted in. Even when you have access to a project through your qualifications, you are always flagged as a suspicious entity, someone to keep an eye on, someone whose dream ought to be lived as a nightmare. Almost a year ago, it was so ironic for me to be on NASA calls, preparing our MOXIE instrument for launch, and to be on the exact same day on calls with student activists about announced regulations that had over one million of us as international students in the US on the verge of getting deported. The space sector is a notoriously unrepresentative field, lacking diversity and inclusion on so many different levels. However, space is just a minor example of the bigger problem of nationality-based discrimination in opportunities around the world. We like to think of space endeavors as ones that bring humanity together in reflection about our place in the universe, that pale blue dot the astronauts see from space, erasing the mental lines dividing our planet into different countries. But current policy sadly makes space just another example of the red taping of opportunities based on birthrights. Perseverance is not just the story of the rover. It is the story of the thousands of women and immigrants who persevered and broke barriers to make this happen. No one chooses their nationality. A dream knows no nationality. Technology and pushing the boundaries of our human exploration with talent and ambition knows no nationality. The oxygen we produce on Mars knows no nationality. I don't necessarily have a clear solution for this problem, 
But I live the struggle every day of my life and I know I'm not the only one. There are over 1 million international students in the United States alone. And I want you all to know about this. Today, more than ever, we need to address this topic that we don't talk about as often. The opportunities that come with nationalities. We need to not only acknowledge, but actively fight this type of discrimination on a personal and systematic level. And we need to start somewhere. For those of you listening to this talk, whether you are academics, engineers, scientists, policymakers, artists, journalists, students, or employers, raise awareness to this topic. Focus on diversity discussions. Make immigrants feel welcome. And put the extra effort to navigate the paperwork of a foreign national. I'm an example of someone who is fortunate enough to be getting an education on some of the best cutting-edge technology in my field. And yet, I'm still denied full access due to my passport. I have been given the instructions, but no access to the tools I need to utilize these instructions to my highest potential. After a year of unending crises, that had all of us on a global scale. We need to start realizing the value of uniting efforts from around the globe. That in order to tackle any of our big global problems, we need to change our mentality. Not to be about where a person comes from, but rather about what they have to offer. No one chooses their nationality and no one should be penalized for it. I'm dedicating this talk to everyone who has been denied an opportunity because of these passports. To all my foreign national friends who share in the struggle. We should work together on all the angles that highlight this problem and help out people affected by it, especially in the more restricted fields like the space sector. Because space is and should always be a space for everyone. Thank you.